All right. In order to be successful, easy transition. <laughs> In order to be successful, you need to have a whiteboard and you should have your notebook out. Let's go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is it called when you vote for uh, the same party all the way down a ticket, a ballot? What is it called when you vote all the way down a ticket for the same party? Good. What is it, Mia? Party line. party line or down the line? On your whiteboard, what is it called if you vote, if I'm a Democrat but I vote for the Republican? I only vote for the opposite party. What is that, Haley? Crossover. On your whiteboard, please tell me. The reason why the United States and other countries, including Russia, hold elections is so their government looks what? It's an L word. I'm so glad we have your name on the board. Thank you, that's so helpful. In case I forgot after already teaching you. Tula. <coughs> Legitimize on your whiteboard. Who are the people uh, who? What are we? What's a fancy term for people who are registered to vote and who can vote? What do we got, Megan? Electorate. What do we call the right to vote? Good. What do we got, Tatum? Suffrage. Suffrage. On your whiteboard. Please tell me. Here in Florida, we practice what type of primaries? Good, Ryan. Closed primaries. On your whiteboard, please tell me. True or false? Popular elections decide presidential. Good. What is it? Uh, two. I just blended two of them. Tula. False. False. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is it called when, what's a fancy term? For when states want to be the earliest primary available so they can have the advantage and influence over a future. What is it, Sean? Front loading. What state is the earliest state to vote? Good. Colin, what state is the only state caucusing? Ah, I see what I did there. I tried doing it fast. What is it, uh, Bronson? Iowa. Okay, here we go. This is new content. Here we go. So after a primary is won by winner take all, they go to the national convention. So your next heading is national convention. What do you got? Yeah, but Iowa is like the big one. I love New Hampshire. We used to have a house in New Hampshire, so I personally love New Hampshire, but no, no one really cares. All right, here we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, after the elections, um, uh, after the primaries occur with the winner take all, then we go to the national convention. Now, the national conventions are hosted by the respective parties. Write it down. The national conventions are hosted by the parties. And this is where electors who we'll talk about here in a few minutes, gather to confirm the primaries, to confirm the primaries and officially nominate their candidate for the general election. So, back in the day, the national conventions used to be a really big deal and used to be a surprise, like who is going to win the nomination. Today in 2023, are they a surprise? No, we already know who's going to be the candidate running for president. Back in the day, keep in mind, back in the day, you used to have an election in your home state and then you would drive to the national convention and you would have the, oh, I've got the count. And then you would stand in the middle of a room and say, New Hampshire is giving, you know, whoever five lectures. And that's how they would elect their candidate because you didn't know what was happening in all the other places. 2023, we know what's happening all the time. Can we agree? So we don't really need it. You need to know that national conventions are used today as a launching of a presidential candidacy. It's like, a, it's a launch party for a candidate. It's supposed to give them lots of press. 
and it's supposed to be a positive thing for the party. Okay, so today it's mostly used for press as a way to get people together and get people excited for the president, uh, their candidate. Okay, so when we are talking about, we talked about yesterday electorate, yes. We talked about initiatives at Citizens, yes. Did we do that? Okay, we'll talk about it in a sec. All right, so after the national convention, we go to general elections. The national convention begins the general election. The general election is when you have two candidates from two parties competing against each other. The general election is when you have two candidates from two different parties going against each other and will end in a general election. Okay. Whoever wins will win based on the electoral college. Okay, so what is the electoral college? That's your new heading. So the general election is going to bring what we'll call the electoral college into play. I personally think the electoral college is the hardest thing to understand. Everything else seems to make sense. This one I think is a little bit tricky. You need to know it's created as a safeguard. For a democracy. AKA, it was created so the idiot masses couldn't pick an idiot. <laughs> Essentially, they didn't have full faith in their people of uh, the United States. Okay, what it means is there are 538 people throughout the United States called electorates. Write it down. There are 538 people spread out throughout the United States called electorates. They are not elected members. So it's not our senators. It is not our representatives. There are other people who are politically connected who get to be our electors. I don't know. I don't know. They're like high ups in the parties. Does that make sense? If you're really high up in the Republican Party here in the state of Florida, but you're not an elected official, you're probably an elector. Does that make sense? The parties get to spread them out to whoever they want, and it's like a loyalty kind of thing. These people vote to confirm or reject the popular vote within their state. So how it's supposed to go is that the people vote for Joe Biden, okay, in a popular vote. They count up all the votes. Joe Biden wins by 500,000 votes, whatever. The electors are then supposed to give all of their votes to Joe Biden. However, it does happen every once in a while that the electors rebel and go against the popular opinion because they can, because that's what their job is, right? They can kind of regulate. But most of the time, they confirm whatever the public opinion is. So some, every state does it different. Write it down. Every state does it different. Why does every state do it differently, Mia? Run, states run their own elections. So in some states, like in Florida, you either win all of the electoral votes or you get none of the electoral votes. So we have 28, I think. So that means we, if you win the state of Florida, how many votes do you get? 28 to get you to the magic number of 270. You need to know presidents win elections by hitting 270. That's the only thing they care about on election night is hitting 270. <laughs> That's the magic number. So some states, if it's a close one and the popular vote is close, then they can split votes. So some, if you win 54% of the votes, you get 54% of the electoral votes, and the other things go, other electoral um, points go to the other candidate. So some, uh, some states divide. Right, Ryan? Yes. Thank you. So with that being said, you do need to know that they are the ones to decide presidential elections. 
they are incredibly influential, but they are not, not represent, uh, they're not elected by the people. So they're just people around our state who get to pass a vote. You get to see them at the National Convention. Have you ever seen the floor of the National Convention where everyone's got like a stick with the state of like Florida, Nebraska, and stuff like that? All of those people there are your electors. So they get together and everyone standing on the floor is your electors. People like in the Raptors and stuff, they're not. What do you got? What party? It depends on each state. They can, they can, they can go against the popular vote. They can. What do you got? Because uh, they're in the Constitution. And how hard is it to get things out of the Constitution? That's the thing. Uh, there is a movement to get rid of the Electoral College because, you know, it's an older system. But small states like it because it forces politicians to come. Uh, big states hate it. Uh, big states kind of like it because it more politicians spend more time in their states. Um, it's a flawed system. It's not a great system, but it's the system we have, and that's how America kind of deals with it every once in a while. Like, for instance, Donald Trump lost the election by, what, 2 million or 3 million votes, but won the election because of the Electoral College, right? I mean, he won. He 1,000% he won, because if you win the Electoral College, you get it, but America didn't want him, right? It's like 3 million votes is a big amount of votes, but that's the catch-22. It's a good thing and a bad thing, because nothing is all good, nothing is all bad. All right, so your Electoral College is 538. It is the one that gets to decide who becomes president and who does not. All right, um, let's talk differences between types of um, votes, types of votes. So the electorate we already talked about are the people who vote. Initiatives, our citizens get to propose legislation. So if I've decided that I want to change the name of HB Plant High School to the Samantha Bennett Academy, which I think has a nice little ring to it, I can put it on an initiative on the next ballot. If I get enough signatures, I can make it an initiative and I will let the people of Tampa vote. And they will obviously confirm because it has a nice ring to it. The Samantha Bennett Institute. The Bennies, we could have as our little theme. There you go. See, like cute. It's on it. Here we go. Uh, referendum is when the state legislature allows the people to make the final decision, not the legislature. We see this a lot. Um, if politicians don't know if it's going to be popular or not, they typically do this. Um, we're going to see a lot of this is being done with uh, legalizing marijuana. It's all done by referendum. We let the people actually vote. Do they want it or do they not want it? And most states are saying yes. Okay. We also did this with an, a tax increase of one penny, um, and that has gone to fixing up the schools. Have you noticed that schools are getting better? The school is getting better, whether you want to see it or not. I mean, that's a new unit right there. The air conditioning unit. It was put in two years ago. Okay, the bathrooms are because you people are idiots and do stupid shit in the bathrooms. Not me. I'm saying all of you. And then you have a recall. Then you have a recall, which is when vo voters remove a person from elected office. Here in Tampa, we don't get many recalls. There was a threat of a recall against Jane Castor, who is very popular here in Tampa. Um, one of her highest deputies uh, tried to badge her way out of a uh, drunk driving incident in St. Pete. I don't know if you remember it. And um, there was a small movement of people who wanted Jane Castor to resign. It didn't catch on. She's fine. She's still super popular, but there was a slight moment. An incumbent is someone who is already in the office. So if we're talking about the presidential election of 2024, who is the incumbent? Joe Biden, he's already in the office and he's seeking re-election, so he's the incumbent. So we need to know these terms. What do you got, Ryan? So, initiative, referendum, and recall are in states? Uh, state and federal, usually. Uh, they, But usually you see more of them for state. To do a referendum nationally is kind of chaotic. All right. Ooh, we already covered these, so. All right. So in um, elections, kind of going forward, you need to know that interest groups and political groups play a huge role because interest groups and political 
groups do a lot of fundraising. So, is it easier or hard to run for president? Hard. Is it easier or hard to run for a representative? Hard. It's a lot of money to run a campaign. It's millions of dollars. Even just to do a state senator or a state representative, it is very expensive. So, if you don't have the money, you have to get the money. And a lot of that is by doing interest groups and political groups. Which, keep in mind, they're not going to give you money unless you give them something, right? Because I would like money. Please, give me money. Christmas is coming. I'm a little concerned. I need money. But if you give me money, you're expecting your grades to be higher, aren't you? You're all looking for a little convenience, aren't you? But that being said, same thing with politicians. The more money political groups and interest groups give them, they're looking for things in return. Okay. So when we're talking about uh, elections, we're also talking about candidate centered you do know i see you bronson there's literally 11 people in the room <laughs> candidate centered campaigns which is all about selling the person campaigns right now is really about you liking the person a lot of people didn't vote for hillary over Trump, a lot of people, there was a lot of people, and my husband is one of these people, who did not like Trump, but also did not like Hillary. And so he got into the booth, voting booth, on 2016, and like shook his head, and just like wiggled something loose, and then voted for something. That's how he elected. Because he didn't like either of them. Because he couldn't pick on just he doesn't make decisions based on politics. He bases everything on how he likes them. And that's how most Americans vote. Do I like this person? That's what campaign center, uh, candidate centered is if you like them. Which, by the way, how often do you see candidates doing kind of weird things? Like going to the Iowa State Fair and eating like Oreos and like trying to be relatable and like going for like staged runs and going to the gym and letting people f like take pictures of them and hang, huh? Get disrupted. Sometimes, yeah, because they want people to see you as like the average guy. No, you're saying like how disruptive that sounds like it's ridiculous. No, no, it's just in the big swings. Um, and they want like people to feel like you can go and have a beer with this guy and that's what's gonna get the election won for them. Um, like Donald Trump, the interviews Donald Trump is doing are with only very comfortable people, really. Can we agree? People who are on his side and stuff like that. He's only really doing rallies, which benefit him and his base. Because if you love Donald Trump, you love Donald Trump at a rally. And so Donald Trump is giving you exactly what you want, and he's really only doing rallies at this point because people like the persona of Donald Trump. Think about it. How, what other president has garnered people wearing their election merch every day going forward. How many Biden hats have you seen and t-shirts? How many Obama did you see? Obama's been one of the most popular presidents. Yeah. How many Trump shirts have you seen? A lot. A lot. Okay. With that being said, it's because people who really buy into the whole Trump thing really love his personality because that's the way they sold it. Does that make sense? And that has identified with a lot of people. Now, Joe Biden has done a really terrible job of getting people to be like, oh man, he calls, they call him Grandpa Joe. So you have this like sentimental like, oh, he's old. Aw, that's so cute. Because they're trying to get you to see him in a different way. So you'll be like, aw, I like Joe. He's like my grandfather. Like, old and old. He says kind of weird things. Okay? That's what candidate-centered things are. Is they're trying to get you to like them personally. So you'll go ahead and vote for them. Okay, on your whiteboard. Answer the question. We're still doing boards. We're doing two things at the same time, Ryan. We can multitask. Turn to your neighbor and share your answer. Accept. 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 Scandals is the correct answer. Okay. 
So when we talk about incumbents, incumbent benefits, ladies and gentlemen. Incumbent benefits is your next heading in your notes. See, we're going to do two things at the same time. We can multitask people. Incumbents have a huge advantage because they're already super well known. Like Joe Biden, everyone knows Joe Biden's name. Now, whether you like Joe Biden or hate Joe Biden, that is completely up to you. But everyone knows who Joe Biden is. Okay? Your constituent services. As an incumbent, as someone who has one office, you get money for re-election. Isn't that nice? Also, if you are a government official, you get free mail. You get to send things for free. It is so nice. It's one of the perks. So if I was running to challenge Joe Biden, okay, I'd have to pay for all my mailings. I'd have to pay to get people to know my name, like do radio ads, television ads. Does he have to work that hard? No, absolutely not, because when you're incumbent, it is easier for you, and you do need to know that. You need to know the term war chest, Haley. Put your phone away. You need to know the term war chest, because war chest means money. How much money do they have access to? Who has the largest war chest going into 2024? Trump. Trump. However, it's not as big as it used to be, but Donald Trump has the largest war chest, okay? Which means he has a lot more at his access than anyone else does. Uh, people donate obscene amounts to him. He, uh, Obama was the first one to really start doing this, is asking lots of people for low numbers. He, d Obama was the first person to say, hey, donate. If you can donate five bucks to my campaign, I'd really appreciate it. So what did people start doing? Donating five bucks to his campaign. And that was not just one person, but thousands and thousands of people were doing it. And that's what brought to campaigning instead of doing going after big donors, which people still do. They're now asking for little donations from little people. Little donation technically is $100 or less. And Donald Trump gets a lot of people to give him money. Which, keep in mind, if you look at it, he can use it for anything he wants. So what is a lot of it going to? No, court cases, boss. That man has a <laughs> lot of legal bills. Okay, so other benefits. Two, being an incumbent is you're in control of redistricting. So if you're if you're in charge of redistricting, are you making it better for you? Yep. yep. Uh, would candidates gerrymander yes. in order to ensure their reelection? Yes. Uh, midterm elections, it's easy to get reelected in a midterm because most people don't vote in a midterm. My husband does not vote in midterms. He only votes for presidential. So he'll vote on the whole ballot in a presidential, but he ain't showing up every two years. He's really cute. Did I tell you that? Like, he is really cute. Anyway. Um, and coattails. Uh, if the party is successful, then everywhere else is usually successful. So if the Republicans win in 2024, the Republicans will probably win a lot of places. If the Democrats win in 2024, the Democrats will typically pick up a bunch of other spots. Colin. Coattail means if I'm doing well and you're like, oh my God, Bennett, and then like I pull you along. Right? Like, think of celebrities and stuff. If your friend gets super famous and you hang out with your friend, do you get kind of famous? Oh. Yeah. Like Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift's mom is super famous because of Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift's dad's super famous. Like, if you look at like fans, like, take pictures with her mom and dad and stuff. Like, I mean, those are coattails. Like, everyone knows Taylor Swift's cat's names. Yeah, Stabler. Oh, no. And, uh, yeah. So, like, they're, like, they're like famous because of other people. That's why. All right. Incumbency. Uh, you need to know the house safe. House seats are safer than Senate seats. Why are house seats safer? Why? Colin. Because they're, like. There's so many of them. It's hard to keep track of. That's why. There's so many. Here in uh, Florida, we have 28 House of Representatives. 28. That's a lot. Okay? So, is it, do you know who's our person? Kathy, Kathy Castor. Kathy Castor is our person. This is the district. Um, so, Kathy Castor is our person. Does anyone have any excitingly positive thoughts about Kathy Castor? Does anyone have any hateful thoughts about Kathy Castor? No, no, this is why. It is easy to stay elected once you're in the position because 
this uh, House of Representatives, it's really hard to get really passionate about someone, except if you're Matt Gates. His people are very pissed off at him, and he will probably lose. What do you got? They're two separate people. I don't know if they're related, dude. I have no idea. All right. You do need to know that incumbents can say, look at all the things I've done for you. I passed this bill. I passed this bill. I did this. Okay, whether you like Kathy Castor or not, the roads are improving in South Tampa. Can we agree? And whether it's true or not, Kathy can say, look at all the roads I fixed. And you'll be like, yes, Kathy Castor, my road does not have a pothole. Last year it had five. So I'm grateful. Whether that's actually her or not, I have no idea. On your board, here we go. All right, turn to your neighbor and share your answer. Go. What do we got? Let me see. The answer is D. African Americans are more likely to be in part of the Democratic Party. You need to know a high income individual is more likely to be part of the Republican. A highly educated individual is more likely to be a Democrat. A Protestant is more likely to be Republican. African American Democrat and a man, Republican actually. Um, that's likely. No, does that mean that is always true? No, of course not. But big picture components, yes. Now here is the racial and ethnic composition here in the United States. As you can see, America up until 2008 was still a whole lot of white people, okay? Since this is 2008, we're obviously in 2023, um, white people ha are continuing to decline. What race has expanded the most? Hispanics. Hispanics have even grown even more, huh? What does it look like now? Like what's the percentage of white people? Uh, I think uh, white people are down to like s almost 70%, and Hispanics have grown significantly. Uh, Hispanics are the fastest growing. Now here's the trick with Hispanics. Hispanics used to vote Democratic, but in the last two elections, they're starting to vote Republicans. So um, Republicans have really been going after their vote, and they've been spending a lot of money on reaching out to Hispanics, while the Democrats have really taken it for granted. Like, oh, you're, you're, <laughs> you're Hispanic, you're going to vote for us because we're the Democrats. And they didn't really, like, go after their votes. And the last two elections, the, the reason why Donald Trump won is because of Hispanics. And states like Florida that flipped for Donald Trump, it's because of the Hispanic vote that tilted. All right. You do need to know voting is based on education. The more you're educated, the more likely you are to vote. You need to know that your income, the higher it is, the more likely you are to vote. What? Yes. Three minutes. Oh, you were so helpful. Three minutes, yeah. Okay. African Americans tend to vote less. Puerto Ricans can only vote on the mainland. Yeah. They're a territory and not a state, so they don't get to vote. Unless they're on the mainland. Do they have to like come here? Yeah. They have to live here? No. Uh, yeah, they can't just like come to land and say, hey, I'm going to vote. Okay. So, Puerto Ricans can only vote. The uh, higher educated you are, the more likely you are to vote. Income, the higher you are, the more likely you are to vote. All right, a couple things you do need to know. Voter turnout is really low in the United States. Even though we're the oldest democracy, we have the lowest turnout. One of the biggest reasons is, is, is because we don't have a national election day. We don't. Every other country has one, we don't. There's a bunch of reasons why, which one is right, who knows. Okay. You do need to know that a lot of people believe here in the United States that it doesn't matter. That it doesn't matter. My vote doesn't matter. I happen to have a, he, he's my husband's best friend who does not vote because, oh, he voted once and his team lost. So he was like, why do I need to do that again? Don't be that guy. All right. Most Americans say that they are too busy to vote. Okay, and for your political parties, we've already covered them in other weeks. I would just kind of review for your test tomorrow. 
keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about um, political parties and your test tomorrow, if you're a junior, raise your hand if you're a junior, you're not taking the test tomorrow because you'll be taking the PSAT. You have nine weeks to make up the test. I would suggest doing it sooner than later. Who are my seniors? Yes. And then I'll see you tomorrow. So make sure you have everything done that you need to. What's up? I think so. I think so. All right. I am done.